Good morning, I'm Sean Harris from the Board of Selectmen. Welcome, it's Thursday morning at 9.30. I'm here to give an update along with our town administrator, Jim Boudreau, and also joining us this morning, it's a pleasure to have Drew Shealy, the Board of Health Director. Thank you for coming in, Drew, appreciate it. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is turn it over to Jim. He can give us an update like he has been all along, and I'll um, jump in here and there and uh, have a few things to say myself, and. Then at some point, he's going to turn it over to Drew. Drew will give us his um, expert background on expert uh, safe distancing and so forth and, and where we're going in that direction and so forth. Turn it over to you, Jim. So I think the, the big news out of the gate, everybody I'm sure is aware the governor has extended the stay-at-home order from May 4th to May 18th. Um, the, the curve is flattened, I think is the term they're using right now, but they're not seeing the reductions that they're anticipating to remove that stay-at-home order. Uh, even when May 18th comes, it's not going to be just we're going from a complete shutdown to completely open. There's going to be a, a rollout. He's established a task force that will um, advise him on how to reopen the economy and reopen government. But we are still in a shutdown uh, until May 18th. So essential employees are only supposed to be working. Don't go out unless you have to. And if you do go out, social distance and you go into some place, wear a mask. Uh, we had one additional case since Monday morning. Uh, this is a case where it was a part of a family that had members who had tested positive. Uh, this individual never tested po uh, never tested, and was not symptomatic, but they did do an antibody test and determined that he was positive for the antibodies, which means at some point he had the virus. Uh, long and short of it is that person counts today, but they're already off their 14-day quarantine. So uh, we're at 68 cases for situate. Eight cases are still in quarantine at this point. Um, again, stay at home. Stay in. Uh, we, uh, after last Saturday when we had the nice weather, uh, Drew and I met and uh, we talked to Kevin Cafferty. We reduced the parking at Lighthouse Point by about a third. Uh, there were just too many cars and too many people out there. We will continue to monitor that. Uh, we've had some uh, calls about the parking lot down at Hummer Rock next to the fire station, so we'll keep an eye on that. Sunday's going to be a nice day. I'm sure I'll take a drive by. I'm sure Drew will take a drive by. Uh, we have the police drive by, and down in Hummer Rock, we'll have the fire department keep an eye on that parking lot. Uh, we don't want to close these things, but if people, you know, continue to go there in large numbers, we will have to reduce the amount of people that can go there. Can I just jump in? So, if someone sure. comes along and they're a little late to the party, and it's and it's crowded. Your advice just to find another spot where they can safely social distance. Correct. Yeah, I, I mean, I usually on a nice day. Doesn't matter what day of the week it is. I take a swing around town. The lighthouse is always full, uh, but Egypt Beach is generally empty. Good. And you Great. can walk in Egypt Beach. Peggotty Beach, a little more people on Peggotty Beach, but still not crowded enough that you have to worry about social distancing. The same with Minot. So there are other places to go. Of course, Minot is very dependent upon the tide, but there are other places you can go. I know people like going to the lighthouse, but if you go to a place, the lighthouse, Driftway Park, please, wherever it is, and there's a lot of people there, Move to someplace else um, and keep that social distance. So I do want to uh, throw it to Drew, though. We've had a lot of questions about masks and the wearing of masks. I want to give Drew a couple minutes to talk about that. So thank you for allowing me to come in and uh, talk about COVID-19 and the use of masks. Currently, the town of Situate is following the CDC guidelines and mass DPH guidelines, which are advising people to wear masks when they go in and out of establishments that are open because of the emergency. And if you're out in general with, you know, more than one or two, with more than one or two people, you should also be wearing a mask. They have not mandated it at the state level. Um, there's been some confusion about a week ago, we got a me uh, memo from the Attorney General's office, Maura Healy, and they stated that cities and towns could not mandate, they could advise. Since then, some towns have mandated, and then people started questioning DPH as far as, so what's the policy? You guys are saying we can, Attorney General is saying we can't. So we did get a memo about two or three days ago saying that cities and towns may impose a mandate on masks but if they do they have to carve out an exemption for people with underlying health conditions that 
it may cause them trouble breathing if they put a mask on. So that would have to be in the condition that we did. I have been in touch with all the members of our board to let them know that we were going to be putting on an advisory. Um, I believe if we did do a mandate, it would require a vote of the Board of Health. An advisory can come out from the health director. We did put the advisory out. Uh, one of the reasons I'm not in favor of a ban at this point is I like to be consistent with what the state is doing. The state and CDC are a lot smarter than I am. They have the scientists, the doctors. They're recommending, they're advising that people wear masks. They're not mandating it. We're advising that people wear masks. We've had calls about, you know, people who are working in restaurants that aren't wearing masks. Well, there's been no evidence that the COVID-19 can be transferred through food. So I'm very comfortable with that. Um, I'm not a real fan of masks in general for healthy people because they become kind of like a, a Petri dish for germs and viruses because people are always touching their face. If you have a mask on and you're wearing it for 45 minutes, an hour, hour and a half, it's amazing how many times you'll touch the mask to either, you know, adjust it, pull it down because you're getting hot. In the restaurant establishment or the food service establishment, they already follow pretty strict guidelines in Article 10 and things that they're supposed to do. They're not allowed to touch ready-to-eat foods with bare hand. They have to wear gloves. All of these things ensure food safety, where if you're introducing a potential Petri dish of masks in there, when people take masks off, you don't know if they're taking them off properly, if they're putting them on right, hand washing, if they're doing that. So it really, I think it enhances the possibility that you could get something. Not food related, not COVID-19 related, but anything else related. So, you know, that's why I'm not really in favor of the mask. Um, you know, Marshfield has mandated it. Cohasset has mandated it. Braintree, I believe, is an advisory. Quincy has mandated it. I believe Somerville and Cambridge have mandated it. Boston hasn't mandated it. And when they asked uh, Mayor Walsh, his response was, uh, I think everyone should know that they should be wearing a mask. We shouldn't have to mandate it. People have to take responsibility for their own actions also. The other part of the mask is, when do you decide that it's okay to take it off? If the state's not telling us to put it on, we are. Again, the state has all the doctors, all the scientists, all the epidemiologists. When do we take it off? There have been no studies out there that confirm one way or the other. There have been studies out there that says a mask is good. There have been studies out there that a mask is not good. So I always go to the higher authority. I let the state know often that I like consistency. Um, so that's, that's where we are on the mask right now. It is an advisory. If it was going to become a mandate, I believe the Board of Health would have to vote on it. We do have a meeting on May 11th um, scheduled, but right now that's not on the agenda. Uh, just another update, we uh, asked the state for advisory or guidelines for marinas. We were on a conference call last week and I, I was lucky enough to get my question asked out of 400 participants that were in the call. I queued up early. And um, again, I, I look for consistency from the state. I, we asked a question about marinas. Are they going to be allowed to open? We have, you know, a vast coastline here in the state of Massachusetts. And f the worst thing in my eyes would be if the state turned around and said, you know what, we're going to leave that up to individual cities and towns to decide. That's like the 
St. Patrick's Day parade. They're the experts. We're looking for some guidance from them. So they did come out with guidance. Marinas will be allowed to open. We'll be meeting with the Harbor Master this week to go over the plans. That's good news. Obviously, there'll be guidelines. There'll be things that people are supposed to do. They'll have to follow. So we'll get there. We also have an email into the state asking about golf courses. I've had some calls on golf courses and whether or not they're going to be allowed to open. Um, I believe that, you know, at some point we do have to get the economy up and running, and it's going to be in baby, baby, baby steps. It's not going to be up and going all at once, I believe, until we have enough testing. But there are certain things that we can do on a small scale that can gradually help us reopen. I think the golf course is one of them where, you know, people could – call in, have all their tea times done by phone. You could skip a tea time, so instead of every nine minutes a foursome is going out, it's every 18 minutes. You could limit one person to cart so that you're not right on top of each other. You could require that the pins stay in the hole so that people aren't constantly touching the flag. Um, obviously, Dining rooms would not be open. You could not congregate inside the clubhouse or congregate inside, you know, the restaurant part of a golf course. But you could operate a to-go counter, very similar. You could also operate a food cart or a beverage cart on the course with one person. And, you know, as long as you're social distancing, it shouldn't be a problem. Social distancing, again... It's not myself walking by Sean on the sidewalk. It's myself sitting directly next to Sean for, you know, 10 to 15 minutes. That's not social distancing. Walking by someone, that's the, you're not in violation of the social distancing order. You're in violation of the social distancing order when you're right on top of someone for an extended period of time. The state says, you know, 15 minutes, I believe. Anything more than five or six minutes, especially if the person is coughing or sneezing or looks like they're having some troubles, you really want to try to just, you know, maintain social distancing. If I could mandate anything, I would love to just mandate hand washing, hand washing, hand washing. When you go out of your house before you leave, wash your hands. When you get back into your house, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. Keep your hands away from your face, whether you have gloves on or not, whether you're wearing a mask or not, you want to keep your hands away from your face. Well, <clears throat> thank you very much, Joy. I appreciate it, and I happen to agree with a lot what um, what you've just said. Um, you touched on a couple of things that we had mentioned Tuesday night, and I think it's definitely, a, I'd ask Jim to elaborate. Again, even if he's repeating himself, uh, we've, some of us have heard of it before, but the marina and the golf course deserves you know a little more discussion I think if Jim you wouldn't mind elaborating a little more yeah I mean it's if I want to clarify just one of the things that Drew said when we talked about masks he was talking about mandatory masks okay okay right we still support we still believe we are still yep. strongly advising people if you go out you're inside wear a mask please put a mask but we're please. getting a lot of calls about food service establishments and mandatory masks and I think that's uh, was the thrust of Drew's message was the mandatory mask but if you go out and you're going into the supermarket you're going into the store you should be wearing a mask. Um, and, and, again, take it off this way. Don't take it off this way. Wash your hands. Um, I mean, I, I was talking about someone the other day. I said, this is just, it's exactly what your grandmother told you when you were a kid, right? Cover your mouth, wash your hands. Wash your hands, wash your hands, wash your hands. So, right. uh, yeah, so the marinas, we did get the guidance on the marinas. Um, it looks to me like we will be able to open on the 15th based upon the guidance we got. Uh, uh, one person uh, on the boats, the boats have to be one household. You shouldn't be taking other people out in your boat. Uh, that's not part of your family. Uh, you can't gather on the boats. You can't gather on the docks or the piers or the floats. Um, again, social distancing, as Drew talked about. The boats have to stay a safe distance apart. You can't tie your boat up to another boat. You can't uh, jump from boats to boats. Um, and it will be subject to our <clears throat> our discussion, so we'll keep an eye on it. There'll be something that we'll keep a very close eye on. The marine is what people are doing, but uh, obviously, if you're on a mooring, you you are automatically social distance on a mooring. Um, there's no one out there with you. But uh, in the marinas, uh, it's going to be very important that people social distance because if all of a sudden we see that there are cases popping up among boaters, then the marinas end up being closed. So uh, people have to police themselves and really keep a close eye on that. 
Same with the golf course. Um, I did have a conversation with uh, someone in the administration said, I don't understand why I can have people walk on my golf course, but I can't have people walk with golf clubs on my golf course. Good point. Um, and the governor actually mentioned that yesterday. He says, I know some people are letting them walk on the golf courses. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's one we could do. It was actually when the first stay-at-home order came down, golf courses were exempt. Uh, and they did give some guidelines for what we can do with golf courses, and then they closed golf courses. So I think the golf courses will be open. Uh, I sent a directive um, through our human resource director to our new golf, uh, Director uh, Ian Kelly, to start preparing um, the guidelines and what he needs to do internally with his staff to be ready to open the golf course when we get permission to do it. So we want to be all ready to go. I talked to um, uh, our facilities director. I told him to go out and try to find one of those plexiglass shields that we can put up in the, uh, in the pro shop um, in case people have questions, they can go into the pro shop. But one of the other guidelines is that there's no cash, there's no transactions at the golf course. You do everything online. You pay online. You register online. You get your tee time online so that you can basically come in and all you need to do is give your receipt to the starter, and that's the only really interaction you have to have with someone aside from maybe picking up a cot. So right. um, we're trying to be ready. We think I, I do think that um, after May 18th, that'll be one of the things that we'll be allowed to start doing again. Um, so we want to be ready for that. So we've set those guidelines again to our golf director. We've sent the guidelines to the uh, harbor master. Drew's already had one conversation with. We'll have some more conversations with him. Uh, we're also going to have some conversations about when we open the marina, how are we going to let people get their boats in because we don't want uh, you know, 35, 40 people lined up at the boat ramps waiting to put their boat in. Um, so we'll have some conversations about that also. But uh, I think that was good news that we can open the marina. Uh, even if we don't open it the 15th, we can open it the 18th. But I, my reading of the guidelines is we can open it when we're ready to open it. That's really good news I'm so glad to hear it you know we've been lucky that the weather's been the way it's been it's been so so bad but you know people have been dying to get out they want to do the right thing so by letting them you know golf and and, and go boating you know I, I'm, I'm sure they're gonna do the right thing they're just gonna be happy to get to get out there I'm sure so I look forward to that thank you yep. uh, a few more things uh, once again we'll point everybody to the web tongue web page for the COVID-19 updates that's where we post everything uh, when we have the final guidelines and the marina openings, we'll post those. Um, so go to that web page if you have any questions. As the board discussed Tuesday night, uh, the town election is June 13th. Uh, we're going to have shortened hours for the town election. They're going to be from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, we are urging everybody to do early voting. Early voting is available right now by mail only because the town hall is closed. Uh, people who wish to early, may early vote, you can go to the town website, go to the cl town clerk's page, and there's a form you need to fill out, mail back, and we'll mail you a ballot. If you don't have internet connection, those forms are posted on the main door of the town hall. You can come grab one, mail it back, and we'll send you a ballot. We are urging everybody to do the early voting by mail uh, so that we don't have to have that kind of interaction at the polling places on Election Day. So please take advantage of that. If you have any questions, go to the town clerk's website. Everything's there. Or you can call the town clerk's office. There is staff there available every day to answer your questions about this stuff. So uh, the elections are on. Uh, we urge everybody to vote, but we urge you to do it by the early voting method and do it by mail. Uh, transfer station hours are still regular hours, but Monday from 8 to 10, we are still doing senior hours during the pandemic. Uh, so far, I think it's been very well received. I think the seniors are happy. I think uh, most people are uh, honoring that and giving the seniors a little time. So we'll keep an eye on that. We'll keep doing that uh, during the pandemic until things start to loosen up a little bit. So Mondays from 8 to 10 are senior hours at the transfer station. How's that working, Jim? I haven't been down there. Again, uh, just anecdotally from the guys, I think it's working well. Good. Um, so, um, so far, so good. Great. Uh, another, uh, another news flash for the day. We will start, the Citrus Water Department will start uh, activating water services starting next week. Uh, we'd put a two-week moratorium on that to begin with, and then we extended it for an additional week. We will start next week. We have put guidelines in place for the crews. Uh, there will be guidelines in place for the residents. They'll be able to get those either on the website or by calling the water department. Uh, if you wish to have your water service turned on, there is a form you need to fill out, which is a normal form we do every year. Go to the water department webpage on the town website. Fill out the form. It's under um, permission form for season turn-on. It's right at the top of their list. 
uh, fill it out, send it back, and we will have a crew starting next week that will be turning the water services back. Jim, on. can you just, uh, and I know it crystal clear why, would you just in like one or two sentences say why we've done what we've done? Because on the outside, people, you have to explain it to those individuals and then they get it. But just tell the folks why we didn't wasn't business as usual. As far yeah, as we have around. a we have a twelve person water department. Right. Uh, when the pandemic started, we went to an A and B schedule to separate the crews and make sure that we didn't contaminate everybody if someone was potentially exposed to the virus. Um, of that twelve member crew, three or four have the correct licenses to actually run the water plant. Uh, normally, we can go out to your house, turn the gate in the in the street go on our way, just kind of wave, never have to say anything. There are occasions every year where we turn that gate valve and that gate valve breaks. And now all of a sudden we have four, five, six guys from the water department with backhoes, with shovels, in a hole, all together trying to fix that water main break. Um, that's not protective of our employees. Uh, also at the beginning of this, we really didn't have a whole lot of PPE, uh, face masks and things for the guys. We've gotten some of that in, so that'll be able to do that next week. Uh, it was strictly around protecting the health of the water department employees so we would maintain a critical mass of people able to produce water for the town. Strictly that. Thank you. Very well said. Thanks. And you just touched on a couple of things I'd ask you to circle back if you would. You had mentioned Ian Kelly. I have yet to meet him, and he has taken the place of Bob Sanderson. After I don't need to laugh. I've yet to meet him. I did oh, his final I, interview on a, uh, well, on a meeting call. All right, so well, we, we spoke either. about it Tuesday night, but, if you know, um, when will he be around and, and, and all? where's he come he's, from? What's his background? He's starting uh, where he comes from, I'm not sure, but he's coming to us from the Blue Hills Country Club. Okay. He's been there for That's... several years at Blue Hills, so uh, I think he's going to be fantastic. Um, very social media savvy, from what I can understand. Okay. Very enthusiastic, has a lot of ideas. Um, uh, Monty was on the call with Bob and I when we did the final interview, and, and Monty is really excited about what he thinks this guy's going to bring, so. Great, great. Um, and superintendent as well. Have you had a conversation with him? Have you ever met him? Uh, William Burkhead? No. It was it was brought, you know, Karen Conley from the Board of Selectmen had served on that committee with, I think, 16 other individuals from admin to principals to uh, citizens of the town. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, Karen said they met once or twice and then this all started so it had to be all done remotely so that was uh, the announcement was made the other night and again i want to just mention his name welcome him to this town i look forward to meeting him and i you know really want to thank uh, ron for doing such a great job he's been here the amount of years he's been here yeah I, one of the things sean that i need to get out uh that i got from kevin cafferty right before i came in uh i've mentioned this a couple times please 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 do not put flushable wipes or rags into your toilet and flush them into the, to into the source system. Uh, we've already had one um, a backup caused by flushable wipes in the pipe, um, and we had to send a crew out to fix that. Uh, it's my understanding that these wipes, they're not flushable. They can say flushable all they want. They cause havoc with the pumps uh, at the treatment plant. Uh, we've had several issues with them, so please... Do not, they say they're flushable. That just means they go down the toilet. They don't go through the treatment plant. So do not put those into the system. Uh, they are causing a lot of problems. They are causing backups. Uh, and then we have to send crews out, and that's putting those crews at risk because now those guys are getting too close together. So please stop putting the disposable wipes and rags down the toilet. Uh, one other thing, uh, people will know we've started the prep, the prep work for the paving. The grinders have been out. Uh, Ocean Ave, Oceanside Drive, sorry, has been has been ground down so they're out there working so over the next couple of weeks with the weather we will see the the paving crews and the paving start working so do you get something else? i just wanted to you know throughout the whole pandemic we have a small health department here in the town of situate and the job that you know eileen scotty our public health nurse Teresa tufts our admin and john schmidt the assistant director you know, they've all been working from home, coming in various different times to the office, so not one of us has been in the office at any one time. And the job that they're doing is just outstanding, and, you know, the residents of Situate should be very proud of what they're doing. We're still maintaining all our regular projects that we do as far as Title V and review, and, you know, people still are buying houses and going to closings remotely, and... Uh, 
they're still pushing that work out on top of everything else that they're doing. So I, I just like to thank them. They've been really great. Yeah, and I want to include Drew in that. Uh, when someone calls and they have a question, Drew just says, give them my cell phone number. Uh, so uh, Drew's ear, is, his, his cell phone's pretty much sewn to his ear. But if anybody has a question, Drew will be happy to talk to you. Um, uh, this is not something any of us tra trained or planned for, but he's done a fantastic job with his staff. Also, a thank you to Ron Griffin and his staff uh, because they have made the school nurses available yep. to the Board of Health. Right. Um, we use them, if necessary, for the con what they call the contact tracing if someone gets a positive. Uh, and they've been very helpful because our public nurse w was, was getting overwhelmed. So uh, it's been a great, uh, you know, great team effort. Everybody really has pitched in. There's none of this, not my department, not me, not me. Uh, so Drew's office has done a great job, um, as has the rest of the town. Two other things, Sean, that I was asked to touch on. Um, <laughs> why was Go Green closed yesterday? I know your phone uh, lit up, uh, our phone lit up. Um, Go Green called late yesterday morning and informed us that they were going to be shutting down for the day, not taking any, uh, any material for the day because they had heavy machinery in there uh, doing a lot of work. Um, he has the right to do that. Uh, to set his hours. The contract says he has to be open five days a week, including Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, so closing on a Wednesday is not any violation of his lease. Uh, we have told him in no uncertain terms that in the future, if he plans to do that, he needs to give sufficient notice so we can let people know. Right. Uh, but as was talked about at the Selectman's meeting, uh, he is not in compliance with his license from the fire department for the storage of mulch. He needs to get in compliance uh, in order to stay in business, so he closed for the day. So we get that machinery in there and get a lot of stuff out. I know they're still working today, but it's my understanding he's open. Right. Uh, and again, we've told him in the future in no uncertain terms, unless it's an emergency and something breaks and you had to close, if you're planning on closing, you need to let us know and we can put something out so people know. Um, right. right. So that was number one. And uh, we received some questions about the Memorial Day parade. Uh, nothing official yet. I've had a couple conversations with Don Knapp. I know a lot of the towns around us have already canceled their Memorial Day parades. Um, even if the governor lifts the stay-at-home order on May 18th, I do not think that they will lift the uh, no large crowd order. I think that will remain in effect. So I think that will have an impact on Memorial Day parade. Uh, at this point, again, a formal decision has not been made, but uh, it's my feeling that we will probably not have a Memorial Day parade because those guidelines on groups over 10 they might go to 20, they might go to 50, but it's not going to go to the size that we have for the Memorial Day Parade on the Commons. So uh, my, my gut feeling is probably not. We'll get a little bit better sense in the next week or two and make an announcement. Um, I would think even if the parade is canceled that uh, we would have some sort of small ceremony uh, with a very limited number of people just to uh, do a remembrance on Memorial Day. But, again, that's subject to change. We have been asked. My, my gut feeling is, and, and Drew might disagree with me, but I don't think he does, my gut feeling is probably not. I don't think those guidelines on gatherings will be loosened to the point that we could have the parade. But you touched on something very important. I was talking to our veterans agent, Donald, just the other day, and it's not going to go unnoticed. If Don goes out there, he said with himself and his children, I offered to help. I'm sure a lot of people would help and uh, put flags on those um, on those graves, he will do at least that. So and we can get some. Gonna, gonna go we can get some volunteers us. to help him. Again, you're outside. You social distance. You Absolutely. take your flags. You go over there. You take your flags. You go over there. Uh, yeah. We are not going to let Memorial Day go no. uh, unnoticed right. and un, unrecognized. But it just may be one of those years oh. where we're not going to be able to do the parade. Couldn't agree more. But uh, definitely, I'm glad you mentioned that. And finally, the last thing I had, Karen, uh, had wanted me to mention that the Coastal Visioning Zoom meeting uh, will be. It, There'll be a coast, coastal visioning meeting tonight by Zoom at 7 o'clock, and you can get the information on the town website, as well as the South Shore Peer Recovery is offering Zoom meetings and support for those in uh, recovery, food, housing, questions, et cetera. Anything else, Drew? There's one other thing she asked. Um, a lot of our small businesses are doing online shopping. So if you're looking for something, you need something, you can order it for them, and, and I think they're doing pickup right now. So. Um, support your local businesses as best you can. 
they're doing the best they can. So if you need something and you know that one of our local shops has it, go online and see if you can get it that way. Yeah, and, I, and I'd like to think that, you know, I know my family is, you know, ordering a lot of to-go from the local restaurants, and, and I hope that continues. That's, I'm going to way too much to go from the local <laughs> and, restaurants. You know, that, that it's so important. I couldn't imagine being in that business. But I just want to thank Drew, and, and again, thank you, Jim, as always, for coming in. I've heard some feedback that people really enjoy these uh, you know, uh, informational meetings. So uh, I want to thank you. And thank you, Seth, for taking the time. I appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. Have a good day. Take care. See you guys.